The CSL Load Cell Upgrade Kit is arguably an essential upgrade to Fanatec's CSL pedals. It provides that all-important load cell which takes braking from the realm of guesswork and replaces it with a healthy dose of control. Fanatec sent me this one to review, but as usual, there were no stipulations about what I can or can't say. There are a couple of surprising differences between this pedal and the now discontinued CSL Elite Load Cell Kit. The new pedal features a 60kg load cell, down from 90 on the predecessor, as well as a change from 16-bit resolution to 12. Though in the case of the latter, I can't imagine anyone would actually be able to notice the difference, especially over such a short pedal travel. In fact, at 12-bit the resolution equates to something like 0.005mm per step, based on my measurements that is, or to put it another way, 1 15th of the thickness of a human hair, or around 1 thousandth of the height of a London bus, so plenty. In lieu of the spring that you might find in an entry-level sim racing pedal, the new CSL Load Cell Brake has an elastomer stack with a 65 Shore Hardness rating, as opposed to the old model which provided a range of elastomers, allowing you various setups from 65 to 95 Shore. So on the face of it, it does seem like the new CSL Load Cell Brake isn't perhaps as good, at least on paper, as its discontinued ancestor. But, as I said in my review of the CSL pedals, this setup really isn't aimed to provide an upgrade or a replacement path for the old CSL Elite model. So then, how does it perform on its own merits? Well, the TLDR is that this is an objectively good brake pedal. The braking feel is excellent and the control you have is extremely impressive. That 65 Shore Elastoma stack provides a feel akin to something like a performance road car, giving you a little bit more pedal travel than you would expect with a harder setup, but not so much that you lose out on the benefits provided by a load cell. And the pedal feel itself is firm, it's just not that brace yourself against the back of the seat and kick like a drunk under a bonfire night feel that you might get in a Formula car. In my opinion, this makes it easier to find and feel around the brake limit, especially for less experienced drivers, and it is much easier to come off of the brake pedal in a smooth and controlled manner, something that can have a pretty steep learning curve on those rock-hard setups that are available when you take very expensive pedals and push them into the big numbers. Not to mention, you really do need a proper set of racing boots for that kind of setup, and they cost more than this pedal. And of course, a rig that costs many times that amount to bolt it to. Now, when compared to a potentiometer or hall effect sensor pedal, the kind that you would find in beginner setups and indeed the basic CSL pedals, the difference is of course night and day. So if you're moving from say an entry level set of Thrustmasters or Logitech pedals or upgrading from the stock CSL brake pedal, it is a big step up in terms of feel, control and performance. You can squeeze the pedal to find the braking threshold, relying on the pressure that you're applying rather than its position. You can modulate the pedal with ease thanks to the firm and consistent pushback from the elastomers. And importantly, you can come off of the pedal in a much more considered manner, making things like trail braking a, just, just a more pleasant exercise. If we compare this to higher strength load cell pedals, then you do lose out on that Formula One style experience where it feels like you're kicking a brick rather than squeezing a pedal. But what you do gain is a pedal set that will work well on low and mid tier rigs which don't have the rigidity to stand up to your braking zone kung fu. Though I do feel that you will actually need a dedicated rig or at least a very solid wheel stand unless you bought your carpet used from a bankrupt cinema. It's well built too with the base and pedal arm being chrome steel and it's completely free of flex as well you would hope. Everything moves freely and smoothly and the elastomer stack compresses without any slot or backlash and this provides confidence when you step on the pedal. Speaking of which, the pedal face itself is perhaps the only real letdown in terms of materials being injection molded plastic and honestly it, it, it works. It is surprisingly rugged though and I don't actually foresee any issues with long term use. It does feel good underfoot but I suspect the optional metal pedal faces from Fanatec will be a popular upgrade so if that's important to you then do factor that into the cost. As with the CSL pedals you can alter the height of the pedal faces to suit your awkward limb geometry. I have mine maxed out on the highest setting for my size 10 feet and it is in about the perfect spot though perhaps those with clown shoes may struggle. As for functionality, the kit works cross-platform when connected to an appropriate Fanatec wheelbase, and it also gives USB connectivity on the PC platform, meaning that you can use these CSL pedals in combination with any wheelbase from any manufacturer. On the software side of things, you can tune the maximum brake force as well as the min and max dead zones in the Fanatec driver, so getting things set up to your preferences is about as straightforward as it's possible to be. I would love, however, for Fanatec to introduce some more advanced tuning options for their pedals, like they have with their direct drive wheelbases. 
But that's not really anything to do with this review, I'm just lobbying in public. So then, when viewed in isolation, I think the CSL load cell brake is great, especially at the price point, which is 140 euros, or if you pick it up in the Black Friday sale, then it's 120. And if you're looking to upgrade from a starter pedal set or perhaps take your first steps in sim racing with some better than entry level kit, then the CSL pedals with the load cell kit represents a pretty compelling proposition. But I must admit to being slightly disappointed that the adjustable elastomer stack is no longer included and that the load cell capacity has been downrated. That all being said, I think there is plenty of pedal weight and feel available, and honestly if I hadn't read the specifications I probably wouldn't have cared all that much about it. And I think that's an important point. If you're looking for a hardcore piece of equipment that's infinitely adjustable and will allow you to make the most of your Schwarzenegger legs, then this well, it really isn't it, but for most sim racing enthusiasts, this is probably a good fit.